So huge thanks from Abby taking time out this morning from Butler and Noble. Uh, Abby's business partner I've known for many years, Andy Bardry. Andy's uh, background is marketing and Abby's been involved in hospitality for the last 12 years. Um, the notes I have here um, show that um, Abby worked in the launch team of Wonder World's, if not the world's most famous hotel, the Burj Al Arab in Dubai, um, and later headhunted for the Grand Hyatt uh, Muscat, um, and also has worked in some of the leading hotels in the UK, the most prestigious being the Marriott Grosvenor House Hotel, um, which is on Park Lane, uh, which is uh, where well, you work as a business analyst looking at revenue generation for accommodation and conference facilities. So um, just looking at the notes, you were part of the transition team from the Le Meridian to the uh, Marriott Group um, yes. or the Marriott Hotel. So uh, quite a wide, varied spectrum. Um, lots of different changes in legislation and law as well um, from working in the Middle East, maybe different cultures as well, uh, to hotels in the UK, although some of those hotels have an American theme to them, um, such as the Mara Hotel, which is an American-owned company. Um, you've also worked for some hotels quite close to where you will be on the evening, such as the Pestantia, um, Chelsea Bridge. Uh, you manage the operations, sales and revenue. So you've worked for some hotels with huge brands like uh, the Marriott Hotel and Hyatt, probably the biggest brands and the Meridian and some smaller brands such from my knowledge base anyway, uh, Pestantia. Um, and how long ago did you connect with Andy? to create Butler and Noble. Sure, thank you, Brendan. We, Andy and I started speaking around in early October 2017, um, when they were speaking about potential um, uh, model on service accommodation, service departments, how that could help um, sophisticated investors. And my experience and expertise within the hotels and there within the HMO market marketing itself, we started a line and having a bit more detailed conversation in terms of how we can make <clears throat> a bit of a difference, if not massive in the industry, to give the investors a bit more value for money potentially and give them a better model to earn a better margin as well. The bottom line needs to be stronger. So we, we launched uh, Butler and Noble around seven weeks back. Uh, we are three co-founders, myself, Andy, and Andy's brother, Matt Marjorie. Matt is an architect and a designer who's worked in the designing industry for 15 plus years, so fairly very well experienced. And I think um, Butler and Noble brings the kind of expertise together on service department in terms of operation, um, <clears throat> revenue management, together the sales side of it as well. And he's got a great marketing experience as he's been a marketer for 12 plus years, managing his own consultancy. And here is Matt who comes to the design architecture area, which is quite massive in many respects. So we are all about find. Can you say it's quite ma massive, Abby, um, in terms of Matt's background? Um, do you mean it's massive because um, for the service accommodation business, it's really key design. It's not just a matter of operations. It's not just a matter of budgets. It's not just a matter of teams, but there's also a design element as well. Is that why it's massive? Which is absolutely right, Brendan. It is indeed. And people, the, the focus and the trends of the buyers now, the corporate booking industry is kind of changing a lot. They've been using the hotels for many years now. So they want to change. They want to see where else can they add more value, you know. People like something more modern, more trendy, but more chic, more quirky. So uh, Matt brings in that kind of expertise on board. And But Renewable is all about three things here. We find the right property, we, we fix the property if it needs a massive change into it, and then we fill it with the paying guests as well. So sure. hand in hand together. So just looking at some key questions which we cover in it's a brief interview because in October there'd be an opportunity for the audience to ask questions to yourself and to other members of the panel. 
what one question is focused on the similarities and differences between hotels and service accommodation well, where do you see the um, similarities and differences and then we look at also um, revenue management would be the second question to cover and sure. then we'll be looking at opportunities for developers so just to go to the first question which is focused on uh, similarities and differences Great, absolutely, Brendan. This is a great question. Um, and I've been asked a lot of times from a number of people as such, people who are not into this industry. But the bottom line is, they're really the same. A service accommodation, i.e. service apartments or apart hotels, is all about running the properties like a hotel. But the, the bottom line really is, your, um, what's your, <clears throat> what kind of growth are you looking into? What kind of clientele are you looking in? Do you really want to run it as a full-fledged hotel? which is a commercial business in the end of the day. But do you want people for one night stays or do you want two minimum nights or three minimum nights? This is where the factor of the service accommodations come into play. Um, service accommodation can scale the business very well for people if they have longer stay guests. This is where you look at short term. Um, hotel is every night. People check in now, people check in to check out tomorrow. So it's a very ongoing process, which means the operation costs are very high as well. Mm -hmm. But a lot of guests are gonna be staying in a property with you. Your operation costs are much more lower and um, your occupancy is higher and this is exactly what owners would like to have um, but there are ways around it where people can attain those kind of clients and unfortunately leisure market is obviously a great market there is no doubt every country kind of sustains themselves the, the, the tourism rather on the leisure clientele but however I think um, service departments is more about corporates as well business clients People like to go where there is a demand in the area and that's where the apartment should be placed as well. Sure. Look, Abby, some people may suggest though that hotels do have some significant strengths, not just a brand, which, you know, Marriott, I don't know how long it's been around, but probably 50 years, maybe a lot longer than 50. Much, much more longer, yeah. <laughs> well, longer than 50 years. So it's, it's a question about the brand because the brand is very strong for the likes of the Marriott Hotel it's also the other question I suppose I have is hotels do work together there's different hotel groups um, for example is it IHG Intercontinental Group and you know you've got the um, likes of the uh, Crown Plaza which fit under that group and you've got the likes of the Holiday Inn as well uh, hopefully I've defined that group correctly um, but th th there's strengths so I understand about the two days three days four days who do you see as your model clients are they staying for a week a month H how long Abby uh, <clears throat> well in an ideal world we would like our clients to stay minimum three nights up to around three to four months or even five months if they want to. It all depends on kind of um, requirements they would tend to have. So if we say, for example, we launch a product in Watford, which is a great location, absolutely no doubt, because in the midweek, you're more or less occupied with the business clients. Or the weekends, you have a lot of leisure clients because people love to come over there for um, Harry Potter's. And some of the weekends are so busy that people go on to stay at in areas like Hemel Hempstead, which is a bit further away, but they're happy to and because there is no availability in Watford over the weekends, mm. the peak times. So it really depends and kind of, uh, and, 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 and that, that, that's really had a significant effect in terms of um, possibly more surface accommodation cropping up in, in, in that area. Would you? Yes, yes, absolutely. Also it's, um, a very much neighboring London as well. So anything on the outer skirts of London works out well as well, because when somebody launches something in a particular area, you need to understand as an operator or an owner, what the demand for that area is going to be like, what the supply is like. Is the supply too much? Do you need to be away from that area and try something else new? However, if the supply is too much, which is fine, but is there a higher demand in that area? So there are ways to find those answers out. And once you're 100 person, that, that's exactly what you want to work with, then you go on to launch. But then you need to also work on 
your full year budget analysis. Abby, but, can I just slow you down for one minute? Um, I, I promise it would be a short interview and I'll, I'll do my best uh, sure. not to interrupt too many times more. But you said about market research, about knowing the area in terms of service accommodation. So how would you start your market research? Right. There are ways to do that, Brendan. So one could understand and see the area, whether there's a business district in the area or not, or if there is, how far are they from there? You have reports online which you can go and research and potentially buy as well about what kind of demand the locations in the UK, the regional UK are having, for example. And would that be from channel managers like Kiko or would that be from separate sources? Yeah, it can be from Kiko, Evivo, a number of channel managers, the other STA reports as well. Uh, the number of ways to do that. And there are many companies out there who conduct these researches on a on a on a one-on-one -on -one basis for clients. So it really depends. And it's very important, Brendan, I think, to know, you know, you might have a good supply, you may have a good dem demand as well. But it's important to know what kind of rates would that area you can capture, how mm. high the rate. And it really comes down to what kind of, op what kind of property are you offering to your clients, the end user? How big or how small is the property going to be? Is a two-bedroom apartment going to be around 45, 50 square meters, which is rather too small, or going to be 70 plus, which is a good size? So they need to work around those areas, and then they can allow a bit of an excess amount of money as well to charge to the clients, because they're entitled to for offering a great, um, great property, good product. Happy. So just to look at the operations and the budget and how is it different and revenue management from a hotel to service accommodation? Not much different, Brandon, not much different at all. Look, when you look at hotels, hotels compete against hotels, obviously, but now hotels are competing against service departments in London as well, uh, for an example. Uh, over the last two or three years, the occupancies and average occupancy of London hotels has gone low. I'm not talking about the peak season as such, but, but the, the other days, other months in the year simply because the service departments are taking a lot of their business as well. There's more value to money. In terms of, of revenue management, you have your own competitor set. You kind of understand your competitor set properly. You see what kind of rates they're offering, what kind of product are they, can you work with them, or can you go higher, can you go lower? And same goes with service departments as well. So somebody goes and opens service department in Hemel Hempstead, for example, right? And say they are around six or seven operators with two or three properties each. They'll have to work along with each other as much as they want their own business, by all means. But they need to understand each other's business model very well before they can put the rate out there and try and capture the kind of clients they want to. And also, I think it's very important to understand what kind of clients are you going to go for. Somewhere in a 40 to 50 pounds per night market or 80 plus, 120 plus, really, it's, it's down to your... Um, your brand management is down to your marketing, your sales, your vision as well, I suppose. There's so many factors that kind of contribute to it. Okay. And Abby, what, one other question is about development opportunities. So um, where do you see the opportunity, opportunity in terms of service accommodation for developers? Uh, it's, a, it's a great one, I would say, Brandon, because um, these guys who were kind of raising these big flats and apartments around the country for single lets as such. The service departments can more or less offer 30 to 40% more um, stronger margin and make their bottom line much more stronger, obviously. But it also depends. Uh, it, it will not work in every area. It will work in an area where there is a corporate demand, business growth demand, a transient requirement as such, not just a, a kind of a leisure or for a single let only. So where there is a demand, I think if there is an opportunity for people to look into and seeing whether, look, let's try and see, we are going to raise say, 40 apartments. Let's try and see we can give five to an operator who can manage them on an SA basis, as long as they can come with the initial first year of analysis that it can actually work for us, giving us 30 to 40 percent higher revenue margin. I don't see reason why they would not like to try it. Um, so there are ways around to make sure they can make more money. Happy. How, how can people find out more about yourself and Butler and Noble? Uh, very easy. We are on a website as well. We are called 
Butler and Noble uk Andy and myself and Matt, we are very much over there. We um, put in a number of um, <clears throat> information on a regular basis and educate our clients too. So um, if they'd like to get in touch with us, please do. Uh, we are on LinkedIn as well. We are also on Facebook. So we are a very new company, but um, we have a vision to get, and I'm sure we will get to the right place at some point. And Abby, just very briefly in 30 seconds or less, what, what is the vision? <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting that, but I'll answer the question anyway. Um, we want to be one of the um, one of the best premium service accommodation operators out there in the UK. And at some point, we would like to go international as well. Um, but we want to potentially help our clients, not just our corporate clients, to get them the right properties to work with us on, but also the sophisticated investors like property developers come and work with us um, and we're more than happy to kind of analyze um, the growth areas within the UK where they're keen to grow properties and build um, and put the investments into. Abby, I just want to say thanks, first of all, for taking time out this morning and apologies for the technical difficulties of uh, the interview um, yes, prior, prior to going live. So huge thanks. I, I look forward to seeing you in October at the Wandsworth Property Network. Thank Looking you. Thank you so much, Brandon. Thank you.